Okay, so here's a quick example um, with Green's theorem. Somebody gives you a line integral, right? Um, x, y, dx plus x squared dy says, okay, I want you to integrate around this triangle. And so the triangle, you'll notice, is given with this positive orientation, right? Going around this way makes it the boundary of this region D, consisting of the triangle and its interior. Um, so we have two ways that we could, we could tackle this, right? We could try to do it directly. Um, so we could think of this as, say, C1, C2, C3. Um, and and you, might even, you might even do this. You might even say, hey, let's think of C as um, C1 plus C2 minus uh, C3, where we take the following um, parameterizations for these curves. Um, along C1, we do R of x equals x0 with x between 0 and 4. Uh, along C2, we take R of y equals oops, 4 y um, with 0 less than or equal to y less than or equal to oops, uh, 2. Okay. And, and then finally for C3, um, put the minus sign there so we can do kind of the, I mean, the natural orientation here would be to take R, maybe we should call these like R1, R2, so R3 of T being, well, let's do um, 2T and T with T between 0 and 2, all right? So if you wanted to do the integral directly, you would compute these three line integrals and add up the result. Um, let's see what we get if we do it. Okay, so along C1, well, actually, we don't have to do anything here, right, because along C1, along the bottom of the triangle, y is held constant, which means that dy is zero, which means we don't have to look at this term. Um, but also y is held at the constant value of zero. So this term is zero, right? So we actually know that that whole integral is zero. We don't have to worry about it, okay? Um, what about C2? So along C2, So along C2, we have, so we're using y as our parameter, right? y goes from 0 to 2. Um, x is held constant, so dx is 0. Um, and x is held at the constant value of 4. So this just becomes the integral from 0 to 2 of 16 dy. So that's 32. That's not so bad, right? Finally, we do the integral along C3. So now we're going to go, so t goes from 0 to 2. Um, x is equal to 2t. y is equal to t. So we have 2t times t, so 2t squared. dx will be 2 times dt, so times 2 times dt. And then x squared is going to be 2 squared is 4 times t squared. So 4t squared times dt, okay? dy is just dt in this case. So we have 4t squared, 4t squared. We have 8t squared. Okay, so that's going to be 8 over 3 times t cubed from 0 to 2. So 8 over 3 times 2 cubed. So 8 over 3 times 8. So 64 over 3. And that means that the overall integral is what? So the overall integral should be, if we're doing it directly, it's going to be the integral along C2 
plus the integral along C3, sorry, along C1, uh, C1, C2, minus the integral along C3. So it's 0 plus 32 minus 64 over 3. Um, so if you work that out, you end up with a value of 32 over 3 for the integral. Okay? All right, so that works out. Um, what if we do the other side? What if we do this version of Green's theorem? Right? We do the other, you know, the right-hand side of the equation, see if it works. Let's check and see. So on the other hand, the integral over d, dq dx minus dp dy. Okay. So let's see. If I was going to describe this region here, I would probably say that um, so this would be what y equals, I say y goes from 0 to 1 half x, right? With x going from 0 to 4. So y goes from 0 to half x, x goes from 0 to 4. Um, dq dx is 2x. dp dy is x, so it's 2x minus x, dy, dx. So that's simply x, right? So this is um, integral from 0 to 4 of x, y from 0 to half x, right? Because we do the y integral. Um, so that's just the integral from 0 to 4 of 1 half x squared dx. Okay, so that is going to be uh, 1 over 6 x cubed from 0 to 4. So that's 64 over 6, which reduces to 32 over 3. And so we can check that uh, whichever way you do it, you get the same answer, okay? So at least in this one example, looks like Green's theorem checks out. In the next video, uh, we'll try to understand more generally why Green's theorem is true.